Hi, welcome to What's On Your Minds. I am Peter Schnauwart and what can we learn from a woman who has been homeless and now she's a money mindset coach. I give you Sharita Humphrey. She is living in Houston in the US and she is sharing her story about the fact that she was homeless, having two sm small children and now she's living a wealthy life and wealthy, that's a definition that for every one of us is personal. Enjoy the golden nuggets of this great story with Sharita Humphrey. Bye bye and enjoy the weekend. Welcome to What's on Your Mind with Peter Snowart. Every week a guest talks about his or her story and that story can inspire you to change your own. Here's Peter. Well, Sharita, good afternoon. I good believe, afternoon. believe it's good afternoon for you. Eh? Yes. So where are you based? I am in I am in the U.S. I'm in Houston, Texas. Ah, Houston, Texas. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yes. I've been there once. I've been there once. Oh, yes. This is probably this. Yeah. You, if you're going to come to Houston now between January and May is probably the time to come. <laughs> Because the weather is great or? Um, weather is great. It's not too bad. But from June to September, we hit record numbers over 100 every single day. Okay. Yeah. So the heat cool. index is so ridiculous. So it's quite impossible to go outside. Oh, yeah. Unless you like the heat. If you're a person who loves the sun. Houston is where you want to come every single summer. Okay. Oh, I, didn't, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Well, it's been a while. I think it's about 20 years I've been to oh, Houston. Wow. So, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. Now, um, you were born there or? I was, I am born and raised in Houston, Texas. Okay, cool. Now, first question. Okay. It's an easy one. Okay. What's on your mind? What's on my mind? Um, I am ready to travel. <laughs> I was supposed to come up, go overseas and stop, make a stop in London um, last year and actually stay there for three or four months. But of course, due the, to the global pause, I um, was not able to do that. So looking forward to um, just traveling. Tra I mean, traveling is something that I love to do. It's my absolute favorite thing to do besides talk, besides talk about money management. Okay, so and it's it's traveling for for professional reasons. Is about to oh. um, how do you oh. say that? Yes, I to, love to contaminate to contaminate contaminate the people with the money mindset. <laughs> yes, um, I think that travel is um, a part of like it's a it's a gift. Um, it could be therapy. It could like, allow you to reset your mindset. Um, so yeah, that's one of the things that I love. I love to travel for business, but I love to be able to travel just to be able to be with my family, um, get to new people. I love to try new foods. Um, I am a foodie, <laughs> so I like trying to. Um, I like connecting with different cultures. Yeah, so it is always on my bucket. It's on my bucket list to do as much traveling as I possibly can, and to kind of live in different countries several times out of the month. I mean, out of the year, um, in a different place every single year. So that's my goal. I'm looking forward to it. You you, you said, uh, of, you, you just said you mentioned uh, London for a couple of months. I mean, yes. you have children. Do you take yes, them I with do. you? Or, or I do. I have older kids and then I have a five-year-old. The great thing about it is that my five-year-old was always in... Um, learn um homes he was homeschooled and going to private school mm. so it wasn't so the um the pandemic happening didn't really affect um his schooling because he was already doing that anyway so yeah we were going mm. to be um virtual learning and while he we were in london anyway so yeah that's the great thing about being able to kind of have a um be on a financial freedom journey um, we have time mm -hmm. freedom, so we can pretty much live anywhere in the U.S. or anywhere overseas. Okay, but how how do you practically like, practically how do you combine it? I mean, uh, what's his his or her name? His name's Kyle. He's five. Kyle. Uh, okay. Kyle. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Kyle has to do his homework in yes, the, during the to, week. Yes, he still has at, to do at, schooling at, um, eight to three Monday through Friday. And then he still has some um, homework to do and, um, you know, testing and all of those things. Yes. 
still the same thing as if he were going to normal school. But you are coaching clients, I assume. If one of the things is that you're coaching clients, I assume. Yes, I do. I coach clients on how to um, better understand their money, how to grow their money, and really be able to live the life that they want to live. Um, without the financial strain of yeah. always having to go to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but how do you combine it? I mean, I imagine then Kyle is sitting over there. He's doing his schoolwork. He's five, so I, he needs some attention. Of right. You. And, and, and then you are coaching. How, how does that work? Can you, so, can you give me some insight there? Yes. Yeah, so the great thing about it is that Kyle's old teacher, uh, because he's been in school since he was 18 months. So they had a school and they finally closed the school. Um, And so we hired her to help me because I coach clients. So um, most of the time I'm she's doing a lot of the learning during the day. And then I'm kind of just working with him. Sometimes I will keep him um, at home with me or take him to the office with me. And so we're doing virtual learning. The great thing about it is that I've built my business to be able to coach people from across the globe um, and around my schedule. So I really have a lot of Mm. um, freedom within my schedule. And the great thing about it is I was able to incorporate hiring his old teacher to help me out. So I have been very Mm. um, blessed by being able to do that um, and have someone who can help me along with my husband helping me as well. Okay, okay, okay. Now, um, but if I'm correct, you have, Ale, it's, uh, you, Ale, um, you weren't always in this kind of position where oh, no. you could benefit no. uh, financial freedom and the contrary, <laughs> if I'm correct. No, 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 no. So um, I actually lost everything that I owned um, all, um, and was evicted from the place that I, used, that I, I had formerly called home. And my me and my oldest. How, how young were you? Um, I was, was very so young, in the early twenties. Um, so okay, not you know, just hadn't hadn't had enough time to really establish myself professionally or financially. So um, mm-hmm. that's why it's so important to me to have um, money conversations with with Kyle because I didn't grow up having money conversations. We didn't talk about budgeting, saving, investing. Um, you know, and not to take away from my parents, um, but they can't teach you what they don't know. And so you don't know, mm-hmm. what you don't know. And so unfortunately, with leaving my home without those key financial, um, that key financial foundation, I ended up in a situation where I ended up losing my job and ultimately we became homeless. And so with that, um, we ended up staying in a hotel Um, for quite longer than I wanted that to be. Um, But it allowed me to not have so much overhead and I was able to get back to work. And yes, I was still working and living in a motel and had two kids. Um, And so, of course, I was able to take them to a daycare during the day while I was at work and I was saving money Mm -hmm. so that way I can get us out of the situation that we were in. And we ultimately... Mm -hmm. I learned everything about money management. I was taking myself and my children. We were going to the local library here in Houston and every book, Mm -hmm. every resource, every tool that I could get my hands on when it came to money management and personal finance, investing. I was reading about it, um, taking those books home with me, checking them out and just really getting myself into a pattern where I started to save money. I started to build my credit. And then I landed what I thought was going to be my bucket list job. Um, I started to work for the government. um, And that Mm -hmm. really was the thing that changed our situation because I was finally in a job where I was being paid, um, you know, a a nice income. And so I -hmm. was able to get in, get on my feet, you know, get back on our feet financially. We got our new, we got our own place and that kind of is what started the whole thing. So I really feel mm. like me being homeless really shifted my mindset on how I was managing money, how I was think, how my relationship was with money. And that is where I'm sitting here today because I was after several years of working for the government, um, you know, I started to just show people who I knew um, how I was able to pay my bills two, three four months in advance. And they're like, how are you doing this? And I, it was just something for me. 
it was a safety net. Um, so that way I would never go back to the situation of me and my kids being homeless. So I always started to think ahead, even with my monthly expenses. And of course, that turned in. I started to see um, an additional comma in my bank account that I've never seen. I was so excited when I first saw my when I first saw my first comma in my bank account. I didn't know what to do. I was so so excited. Um, I was showing, you know, showing my kids, you know, like we've we've really turned things around. And so people were like, hey, why don't you teach us this? How did you do this? How did you get back? How did you bounce back? And so I could my the position that I worked in at the government, they kind of shied away from you having secondary employment or having an outside business. So I was just showing people for free because I mm -hmm. didn't want to compromise my government position um, and mm -hmm. to ultimately get into any, you know, any have any negative feedback from it. So I was just showing people and people were like, you should do this. And, you know, my husband, I ended up getting remarried and my husband um, was like, you have something you need to show people what you're doing, because even though he was making a high six figure salary, he said, I've never saw anyone so passionate about helping people get into get back into the driver's seat of their finances. And so that was it. I decided I took a leap of faith. I had more than enough money saved. My credit scores were very high and I took a leap of I took a leap of faith and I left my government position even though I thought I was going to be there till I retired um till I retired, but that was not the case. I'm so sorry. And so I decided to just go for it. And that's what I did. I literally okay. went for it. I quit my job. I quit my job. <laughs> I cannot believe I'm saying that. And I'm not advocating for anybody to quit their job. I'm not telling anybody okay. to quit their job. But for me, it was a decision for me to look, you know, I had already hit rock bottom before. So I knew that I could I had enough of a financial safety net that I was going to be OK. But I also knew that um, I could always go back to my government job if I needed to, because I left on good. Yeah. Terms. They okay. were sad that I was yeah. leaving because they're like, you're so young. Why are you you you're risking this for people that you don't know? Or, or is this just a hobby? <laughs> is this a glorified hobby? And I was just like, no, I there's other people who are like me and they need help. And I said, and they're like, so how are they going to pay you if they're in a financial, if they're dealing with financial hardships? And I said, they can. I said, a lot of times mm -hmm. we're um, misallocating our money. We don't really know where our money is. And sometimes you need mm -hmm. an extra pair of eyes. You need someone else um, who's a, a expert in it to be able to help you. Mm -hmm. And so when I did that, I started to get testimonials. People started to follow me. And that is what really kind of took off for me. And this is what I did. This is what I do. And I've been doing this for a couple of few, several years now. And it's been great. It's been great. Um, even yeah. during the pandemic, um, you know, a lot of people were reaching out, asking, you know, for help. So um, continue to be able to grow and expand the business um, outside of the U.S. So excited to continue to help people really yeah. become I like to call them trailblazers because a trailblazer yeah. creates their own path. So I always call my, I tell my community, I call them financial trailblazers because your mm -hmm. wealth, Peter, will look different from my level of wealth because we we all have different core values and what we desire out of mm -hmm. life. So, but it, that mm -hmm. doesn't mean that because I may want a million dollars in the bank when I retire, someone else may only need 250,000 or less yep. or less than that. It just depends on what type of life do you see for mm -hmm. yourself. Yep. And so that is where I say I help people yep. buy back their time yep. so they can really enjoy this one thing that we have and that's called life. Yeah. Now, what, what I'm really uh, want to uh, discover is, I mean, I imagine that you were homeless mm -hmm. and um, I can imagine, and it's an assumption that I make, um, that when you're in such a position with two young children, mm -hmm. um, that you're living in a, in a position of fear and that you're also living in a, and it's, it's, it would be easy 
to to take on a, a kind of an, a victim mindset right. position. Right. And I can also imagine that um, that the people you were surrounded with, um, yeah, maybe they're like, yeah, I don't want to know you because you're you're like you you are you right. you're homeless and things like that. So, I mean. They say that, tell me which are the five people or the mindset of the five people that you hang out with and you will have that same mindset. Right. Where did you, where, where did you get that mindset to start reading uh, about personal growth, money mindset? Where, where do you get that? Where do you get that insight? How did that happen? You woke up just one morning and you're like, let's get, hey kids, let's go to library and start to read. I mean, I can imagine you were fed up. Huh? Right. And you're like, right. I don't want to give this kind of uh, life to my children. They right. deserve more. Right. But how, how did that process work for you, Sharita? I think that one of the things is I've always been um, a researcher and a reader. I've, ever since I was a kid, I was always one. Of, I was always mm-hmm. the kid that was in the library. I was I was probably the kid that everybody called a nerd. But I'm I'm really a nerd. Uh, but you know, back you know sometimes. You know, they were just I used to be teased because I used to just like to read. And so for me, I said, you know what, what was something that I could do? And I knew that reading and being even if I didn't have the environment of people who could understand where I wanted to go, reading and doing the research would allow me to shift my mindset. Because a lot of times is sometimes the environment and the people that you are around, they don't see what you see because they think it's too big like you you can't have those things because you didn't grow up with those things and so for me I just used to always just kind of look at certain people um and and see them and I'm like okay I may not have had that journey over childhood but success leaves clues so I just was trying to find what is it that they Mm -hmm. were doing that I can from my small <laughs> um, place in the pond, where could I kind of um, start to create a ripple effect? And so I knew reading was going to be the thing um, because one thing is, is it was going to allow me to be able to get someone else's perspective and see what they mm-hmm. give in advice on what they did and how they were able to get to where they are. Not saying my journey will look like theirs, but at least there is some type of mm-hmm. elevation that I can look forward to. Yeah. So that was it. And I knew for me, I did not want to keep, continue a cycle of financial literacy lack that I had to be able to. Uh-huh. The only way that I was going to get the information so that way I could break the hamster wheel or the chain of, you know, generational lack is for me to learn it so I can teach it to my sons. And then for them to be able to and show them that if they see mommy doing this to be an example for them, so they will have and build that resilience in me. So I don't know where the resilience came from. And I think that when people ask me, it's so, you know, cliche, well, what's your why? Yes, I wanted to be able to change the situation that my, me and my kids were in because we were homeless. We didn't have an address. Yeah. There was nowhere for the mail system to send us mail. So it was bigger okay. than my kids. They were the driving force. But for you to mm-hmm. change anything, it has to start with within you. Because if you're doing it just for someone else, even if it's your kids, they're eventually going to leave. So you want to be able to have something that you can stand on that's solid for you. So I did it for me because the more that I can build me up, the more knowledge that I can have, then I can be a better mother. I can be I can rear them. I can teach them things that I didn't know and I can feel confident in doing it. So for me, it was a catch 22. It was 80 20. They were the driving force, but it was me wanting to be better for myself. Because mm-hmm. hitting rock bottom and losing everything, you could literally be like, I can't believe that I've let my life go here and now I've brought children into the mix. So I needed to be whole for me so I can be great for them. So okay. that's where the, all of now, that came from. Okay. Now... What, what were the first books you were reading? Is it, is it books like Think and Grow Rich or oh, Rich yes. Dad and Poor Dad? <laughs> yes. Um, the Millionaire Next Door. 
Think and Grow Rich. Um, I read Gary Keller's One Thing um, because sometimes his, I liked his book because it was not just about um, finance. It was about personal growth and how to mm-hmm. be able to um, build confidence and shift your mindset. Mm-hmm. Mindset was very key for me because I did mm-hmm. feel those bouts of wanting to give up sadness, you know, like, but one of the things that really helped me from not feeling defeated is that I was reading and I was writing things and reading okay. books like that when it comes to personal development helps you to kind of get things out. And so I started to write a lot as well just to kind of brain dump because a lot of times we hold on to negative things and negative behaviors because mm-hmm. they're just stuck in our they're stuck in our mind so i started to write out all of those things that i was feeling negative about so that way when i started to read things that could uplift me and to encourage me i was i could take it in because my mind was not clouded or it was not chaotic mm-hmm. wow and it's it's, it's a- one specific book that really changed your life or is it just a combination of a lot of books? I think Uh, it was, I I have to say, um, Gary Keller's one thing, one thing like the financial books, think and grow rich, the millionaire next door. But Mm -hmm. the overall thing was Gary Keller. One thing, because he was saying, if you can just master and focus on the one thing that's going to be create the domino effect, then it will have a great impact on every other area of your life because you're going to be folk. You're not, you're going to be more focused instead of pulling and trying to pull yourself in so many directions, because then you become a, <clears throat> I don't, I did not want to become a person who was a jack of all trades, but master of nothing. Mm. So I knew I wanted yeah. to be able to master that one thing that was going to be pivotal for me at the moment. And I knew for me to be the one thing I was focused on was me and my children having a place to go. Um, and from there, I once I did that, then that gave me the confidence to submit that application to, you know, apply for the government. So it was continuing that thing to help grow um, my financial portfolio. I can't even like sometimes I say that and I start smiling because I was just thinking to myself, I lost everything. And so now to have an advisor and we're talking about what does my financial future look like? Um, You know what? You know, just talking about, you know, the end because we were talking about 2030. Um, at last month and I was just like wow I said I couldn't see past you know the next day years ago but now I'm planning you know a whole decade of my life is just you know it's just sounds so rewarding after everything I tell people this I lost everything I did not lose hope Mm, great (laughs) I lost everything I did not lose hope now, um, I've heard or read um, a statement about the fact that if you achieved money in a very manipulative way, mm-hmm. you will also are going to lose it in oh. a very, it will be taken away from you in a, oh, yeah. in a bad way. Is it something that you also believe in? Because I feel you're very passionate about giving people a better life through the means of money. Mm-hmm. But it's not like you, like, um, uh, how do you say that? Uh, you see money as a means, I, I, yeah. I, I feel. <laughs> it's and not should, and, 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 <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and money is some kind of uh, energy and money should flow. And right. uh, I, I, I'm not saying you should atta- be attached to it, but I feel that you will, you have to give, and 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 then you can 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 be- get back and things like that. Mm-hmm. Do, what do you think about that statement about I, I um, so. if you get money, if you for for, in, for instance, if you're going to put out a, a course or do some coaching and uh, lie to people and 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 just mm-hmm. getting their money, and your only goal is about getting their money, but they don't see any results. Of course, they have to do the work. Yeah? I mean, then in the long run, that will like come against you. 
and uh, you will lose everything. Do what? What? What's? What's your vision on that? What's your opinion? I I totally agree with that statement. You know why? Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> because my grandmother used to tell me something all the time: a fool and their money shall shoot soon part. And so the thing is, and I never understood that when I was a kid. And I'm like, okay, I don't even know what this means. But I took that and it's just the same thing that you're saying in a different way. Um, if you manipulate the way that you do anything, especially mm -hmm. um, financials, finances, that means that you're really not in control and in the driver's seat of your financial destiny. That you're doing, mm -hmm. you're doing, you're doing things for a quick fix. And that means that you're just putting a Band-Aid on the situation. And what happens is that your reputation should supersede you. Um, and it can't just always be about the money. What is the impact that you're making? Because I can tell most people, they're like, well, I don't ever see you do a lot of advertisements or You're not, you're always giving, giving, giving. Um, and I said this, the reason why is because I said 85% of the business that I do comes from referrals. And those referrals come mm -hmm. from people because I've shown up and I'm not just a coach for them. As I climb, I lift. So when I, when, as, I glow, as I grow, I take my clients and those who are in my audience, in my community, I take them with me. So when I go and I get opportunities to speak on a platform and they're looking for someone or someone says something, I connect my um, community um, outside mm -hmm. of me coaching them to their financial, through, throughout their finances. I believe in an ecosystem. So when you are yep. really doing the when you're really your heart is to serve people, they will know it mm -hmm. and you won't have to, and they will want to pay and honor what you're doing for them because they see the transformation. Mm -hmm. So for me, yep. you don't have to rob people or coach them just for money. If you do it, they will they will know it and they will tell everybody about you. So what you're saying, and I I truly believe also in that, eh? so I fully 100%, 400% agree with you. What you're saying, it all starts with setting your attention right. right. I mean, if your attention is what's in it for me, right. just so the taker's mentality, Right. I mean... You, yes, you're going to get something, but right. it's not going to be a, an exponentially long-term um, beneficial no. For no. you, um, but if you more of the if you really set the intention for yourself, like how can I um, bring value to you? How can I serve you? Right, eh? the other person. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, their intuition, they will feel that, and so everything you do or say right. will be in order to to serve them and to help them. And yeah, and of course, in return, the money will come to you. Right. Right. Is I, that correct? I love that. Yes, that's correct. Yes. You have to serve with in, with intent and impact and not always with income in mind. No. Okay. But does that mean um, that when you are walking or driving around in Houston, for instance, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, you see some people homeless, are you going to, I don't know. Do you have some kind of rule for yourself that you say, I want to dedicate like, I don't know, one homeless person per month or something, and I want to help them as charity to help them because I know where they are because I've been there? Or? Yes, because a lot of people always say, well, I would have never thought you were homeless. And I said, I didn't know homeless had a look. I was just like, um, I said, but way back then, you would have never known that I was homeless. I said, so for me, um, my, you know, it's a huge portion um, and the core values mm -hmm. of our business is to be able to give back to those um, who are homeless. Go into me, go into those shelters because I still go out and 
you know, give my time to organizations and those who are attached to people who are homeless, those who are low, low to moderate income, because sometimes is what they need is a sound voice. They just need some resources and tools from someone who understands their story, because a lot of times Mm -hmm. they close off to certain people because they're like, you can't relate to me. You have no idea what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for me to be able to talk to people who are in those situations because I know what that's like. I've been there and I think that they can hear it in my voice. And when I say certain things to them, they know that I've sat where they are or I've been probably far worse than where they currently are. So it kind of gives them some hope. Now, um, in, uh, in Belgium, and I believe maybe that's also in the States, there was a, a, a television program, I think a couple of years ago. And of course, it's media. And they have to, uh, um, they have to create television to attract views and things right. like that. Um, so I wanted to put it in a little bit of pers- perspective. And they, what they've did is they have uh, selected some uh, homeless people mm-hmm. and they have given them money right. and a house. And they follow them for like, I don't know, weeks or months or whatever to give them a better life, to restart life. And, uh, and at the end of the day, there was only one of the, I don't know, five, six, seven people mm-hmm. who I wouldn't say was again back on the right track and the others were back to, yeah, square one. And how, how can you recognize somebody who is really, um, ready? Mm-hmm. to be coached and who is really ready to change his or her mindset to yeah to to create yeah a, a better life um because sometimes these sometimes some homeless said yeah i prefer ha- having this situation and living this this homeless life mm-hmm. i i like it okay well it's fine um how how do you how do you deal with that because how do you yeah, choose them these these people that you're going to coach because I can imagine not everybody that you help is going to yeah you don't have a hundred percent success ratio I imagine because they have to do the work they right. have to change their mindset and so that's the that's the thing about the people who I serve more normally my clientele are people who are either individuals or families who are middle mm-hmm. class to upper middle class, but they were not always mm-hmm. there. Um, and now mm-hmm. I, I, I also work with small businesses because I, I have a government background. So um, the one thing that I would say is that um, it's not up just about the person who may be homeless because there's a me- yeah. in the U.S. Um, and okay. um, just to be very frank, um, there is a mess, a financial mess in the middle class. Um, and sometimes okay. they're even they're harder to switch their mindsets on it because they've built okay. a lifestyle based on their income. So I think being able to see what, who, no matter what income bracket they're in, especially those who are homeless, just to be able to see what their goals are, because a lot of times if okay. you ask the person, um, what what yeah. do you see for your life? Some sometimes is they don't see past where they are. And so I'm not surprised by the show that you just said, um, because that's what you said. It's it's great television. Of course, they pick people. Mm -hmm. But did Mm -hmm. they really deep down and really understand where that person is Mm -hmm. from a mindset of not just right now, because um, the average person in the U.S., that wins the lottery goes broke in less than five years, yep. three to five years. Yep. Yep. But, so but it's the same all, all over the world. <laughs> yeah. It's the same. Yeah. yeah. So it's even, it's, it's even, it's even, it's even, uh, I wouldn't say worse, but if you take all the money in the world right. and you they divide it on every person, and everybody gets the same in no time. Again, 1% okay. will have 99% of the money. Right. And so that is unfortunate um, and this is why we have what they say in the world, one percent, one percenters, because mm-hmm. it doesn't matter if you give everybody the same credit score, the same amount of money, um, the same um, housing situation. It's not about the things. It's about the person. What do they see for themselves? Where is their mindset? Because without a without a um, shift, without a healthy um, mindset when it comes to financials, it's only going to 
um, reflect in their relationships and the in their their relationship with money and their behaviors. So you can't you can you can't fix up a house and build it on a mm-hmm. shaky foundation. And so some of the times, some people's financial outlooks, behaviors, and mindset is built on mm-hmm. shaky ground. And so just thinking that, okay, if I just give them more money, if they just had a home, if they had a business or they can have more investments, Mm -hmm. then they would be okay. No, because internally there could be some things that they're harboring that has nothing to do with money, has nothing to do with the, where they are, has nothing. They could have a great job and be depressed because we there just because you're in the C level suite or you're sitting as the CEO of a company does not mean that you're not suicidal or that you're not thinking about things so it's a mental thing that's more than that and then tie those things in think just combining a an unhealthy mindset with a unhealthy emotional state it's a disaster for any area of your life financial physical mm-hmm. what have you so um, money is not the end all be all. It is just a tra- it's a wealth transfer vehicle. You get to decide where what destination do you want to be able to reach when you get to your level of retirement. So it's not going to be the thing that's going to make you happy. I was I, I had a crazy day yesterday, but that had nothing to do with my bank account. It's just life. Um, it's just the things that we are because we're human. So don't feel like that once I get to this level of income that right. I'm going to be happy. No, you're not, because there's we see across this globe with celebrity. You think they have everything at the palm of their hands. They have everything that we write down and we dream about, but they're still not happy. They're still because and they commit suicide sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's they're still not happy. So it's not money is not going to heal things that are internally broken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, (laughs) that's it. That's indeed a a, a very big one. Um, Why? Why? Why is the middle class in the U.S. suffering is because they they are spending more than they earn or yeah. is it and, and they live on because there's a culture difference eh? I right. mean, so, I mean yeah, let's talk about the, assum- the assumption the assumption that I have is that that in the US from the things I know that people are really are living on credits like credit okay. cards because oh, yeah. here in in, in in Europe especially Belgium the credit card thing is also here mm-hmm. but we it, it's it's a little bit less um, in, in all culture to do to to yeah to live to live big on credits but it is there eh? it is right. there eh? because uh, is that is that the thing in the US uh, yes. that the middle class is suffering we have a combination or? of things um, the US um, the average person doesn't have $500 saved. So that doesn't matter what income level that you're in. The average person can't, if they have an okay. immediate emergency in the U.S., most people, over 40% of Americans, they don't have $500 saved. And that doesn't matter where what income you're Whoa. that you're in. So then, then add on the cost of student loans because a lot of times people okay. are living mm-hmm. When they're trying to get through education, they're living on their student loans. So they're taking out way more than what they probably need to complete their education. And then by the time it's time to pay it back, they're having to put it in forbearance or, or some type of deferment. And by the time they do get into the career that they want, it's so big. The, the amount of student loans is so massive. And then you add on housing and then you add on credit cards, which here, mm-hmm. credit is huge, like you just said. People will take and live off credit on everything, trips, school, educate. And so all of those things topple on top of you. It, it puts you in a financial strain because this is why you saw so many people in the U.S. have so many immediate financial um, stresses. And I always tell people, if one paycheck, one missed paycheck, one missed direct deposit, one missed payroll um, that's due to you, if you are in an immediate financial hardship, you were in the you were in a hardship prior to the pandemic, you were in a hardship prior to whatever, because you were living far more than what your means could have provided. Because a lot of people are going to work 
especially in the middle class, and they're living paycheck to paycheck. And that's because okay. they have built a lifestyle based on their income and they need it to survive because they built a lifestyle that they like. They like their lifestyle. Actually, a lot of them love it, but it's so financially straining that they start to live mm-hmm. on personal loans, payday loans, balance transfers, all of the things that keep them in a hamster wheel of financial of financial stress. Okay. And um, do you, I don't know where I picked that from, but I believe it was like, I don't know, it was Warren Buffett or whatever. But I believe he said you should um, put 10% of the, the income first in the month on a saving account. Then 10% you give it away to charity. And then do you, is that also some kind of system that you provide to yes. start with? Yes. Of, of course, no. I, I assume you start with what is the goal? What is the, the, the average right. lifestyle that you want to achieve? Right. What is the goal? I think it starts there, eh? right. of course. Right. But, but, but then, then in a practical level, how, how, how do you approach that? Because I think people will understand the mindset, but they also, I think, will need some kind of practical... practical. Um, And I always tell people to beat the statistic. If you don't have at least one month of your total expenses saved, let that make make that a goal that you're working towards. Because if anything happens, then you're not in this position where you're starting to think like, mom, oh my gosh, what do I do? If I lose my job this month, can I pay my bills next month? So being able to start small because everybody's income is different. So for me to tell mm-hmm. someone who is barely making maybe a thousand or two thousand dollars a month to put back, you know, 10 percent of their income, that may be a stretch for mm-hmm. them. But someone making a hundred thousand dollars, they could probably do that. So you have to be able to customize what's going to work for you and build from that. So your percentage may, you may not have a percentage. You may have, I'm going to mm-hmm. save a hundred per month. Um, mm-hmm. And that will leave me times 12, 1200 in a year. That's more, that at least gives you a starting point. And even if you can't start, stop, start there. If you're getting paid weekly, bi-weekly or monthly, start somewhere, put $25. Instead of you going to Starbucks or going out to eat, if that, make that your goal, because sometimes is we're eating our, our savings. <laughs> we're eating our retirement money because we're eating out. We're shopping on Amazon. I like, I like Amazon and I like Jeff Bezos, but sometimes he's already a billionaire. Um, but I need you to start to put <laughs> some of that money that you are putting out kind of bring it back in because maybe that's something that you can put back into your budget. So when people tell me that, I have to customize it based on where they are. So I said, you know what, how much do you spend eating out? If they say, well, I spent about $200 eating out. Okay, so is that in addition to what your grocery bill is? Most people say yes, because they're still making groceries, they're still grocery shopping, but then they're still spending that additional $200 eating out. Okay, so I challenge you to save that instead of eating out, Let's 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 work from where your groceries eat from your pantry, eat from your refrigerator for that month. That will put two hundred dollars back into your budget next month. So starting there would always be something for you to be able to do. If you know you go to Starbucks every day and you Monday through Friday and you spend five dollars a day, that's twenty five dollars at the end of the week. It's four weeks in there. Make it one hundred dollars. Commit to just going to and go and buy at your local grocery store and buy the Tezo and make it at home. (laughs) It's cheaper and you can make multiple times instead of that one time and save that money. So being able to show people where they can save no matter where their income is, is what I like to, you know, what I like to tell them because everybody's going to be in a different income thing and everybody's going to have a different level of debt and commitment that they have to do. So being able to see where can I cut and what make that my savings. And if you are in a moderate to middle class or upper middle class, start at that 10 percent, start at that 10 or 10 percent, but challenge yourself each and every year. If you know 10 percent, if you can save 10 percent every single month for the for one year, increase it, save 15, challenge yourself, double it. Start saving that if you if, if it's just like working out, if when you start working with fives, it's so, so easy. It doesn't even feel like any weight. Adding tens, 
15s, keep it until it starts giving heavier and it ca it causes you to really get into a position where, man, I got to do a lot more work because this keeps getting a lot tougher for me to do. But that's going to be the thing that's going to build that nest egg that you're mm -hmm. going to need, build that safety net that when something happens, you don't immediately go to your credit cards or to a payday loan or to a personal loan, which is going to further impact you later on. Okay, cool. Um, the, um, how how do you keep how do they keep themselves between brackets motivated or disciplined? I mean, it's you know how hard it is to change habits, of course. Eh? And I sometimes also think some people like the drama; they're a little bit attached to it. They're so used to it mm -hmm. that uh, maybe they stick for it for one or two months, but. After the third month, they were. Mm -hmm. yeah. how, how 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 do you how do you do that? It's like a it's like the gym. Every mm -hmm. December, everybody you know after Thanksgiving, after mm. the holidays, we're like gonna be in the gym. I gotta get ready for spring and summer. By February, no one's in the gym. <laughs> it's just like March, maybe right before spring break, no one's no one's in the gym. So one of the things that I always say, we continue to see those patterns. Getting and building, um, it's important for you to get an accountability partner. It is key. Someone okay. that can hold you accountable. And if there's nobody in your family that's in your immediate circle, the very, the most, the, I always tell my client, I always tell people who say, well, Sharita, I want to work with you. I say, you know what? The first thing you need to do is get, be accountable. Post it on the internet. Let me tell you something. There's millions of accountability partners, thousands of people, because when they see you and you keep posting, you're going to have that one or two people. They're like, I thought you said you were going to be saving. Post it out there. Put it out there because that is another way for you to for for someone who does not know you to hold you accountable, because people who know you, they'll be like, well, you can go out. <laughs> But if you put it and started to track it on social media, or even just getting in a, in a group, go into a group of people who are like-minded. Like yeah. I have a Facebook group called the Money Mindset Movement. People come in there and they share what their, they share what their, um, their financial goals or their personal goals or their business goals. And we hold them accountable. So every, when someone's posting and they're talking about, Hey, I don't, I want to get my scores to 700 because 700 is a good score here in the U S we all say, okay, As the group this year, my goal as their coach, even though it's a free group, is to make sure that everybody gets over that hump. So if you've been in the same no. credit scores or if you've been in the same financial bracket for a while, let's talk about how we can help you get out of that situation. How can we help you to um, impact your positively impact your um, credit and your business? How can we do that? So having other people who can support you It's like that thing when you go to, uh, when we go to, and what do you say we were trying to lose weight and you go to something like Weight Watchers and they have those group meetings and everybody's cheering you on and celebrating you. Sometimes we need that to be able to stay motivated. Mm -hmm. So com please connect with a group um, or a, someone that's like-minded that's going to hold you accountable and you hold that person accountable for their own goals, their goals as well. So that will help to keep everybody on track. Okay. And aren't there also people who, because of social media and, and advertisement, that, um, that create like this or have this assumption when they come to you, say, Sharita, I mean, I have nothing right now. Make me overnight a millionaire. Help me. I mean, because they see something on social media and they, they think there's such a thing as getting rich quick. No, I, I don't think I, I don't think I, I don't think that exists, to be honest. No, there is. No, I mean, it's like it's unless you win the lottery. And, and most of the time you didn't win it with the first ticket. <laughs> like most people have been doing this for months and years. Yeah, so, no, yeah, no. so. But if you if you study, if you study statistics, yes. I mean, chances that you win the lottery are extreme. higher uh, no It's are lower, are lower. <laughs> yeah 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 then then getting uh, pregnant right. by uh, using the pill and a condom i studied somewhere <laughs> that and so no no but it's true so yeah. the chances are higher that you're getting pregnant than get than winning the lottery right, right. 
but still people buy these tickets and um, right. yeah and, and there are a lot of studies and and show and cases that people yeah after that they wish they were that they did not win the lottery right, right. afterwards and they say it was the biggest nightmare right. so that's the thing so but what <laughs> what do you do you have the have these people coming around I saying do. Like, make I'm, me make me rich i want to be rich and i'm like well what is your level of rich because yeah. Do you have, when people say this, they're like, well, I want to be rich. Well, what does that look like? What number do you mm -hmm. consider rich? Because someone who was homeless would be consider they would be happy to have $100,000 or no. $50,000 consistently. So you being rich, what does that mean? Are you prepared mm -hmm. for wealth? Are you prepared for rich? Because there's going to, there's going to be people that you need, accountants, lawyers, Financially, like, can, are you prepared for those things? You want the things that come with it, but not all of the responsibility that comes with being mm -hmm. financially responsible, rich or wealthy. Um, there is a lot of things that you must do to be able to maintain it. So just wanting to be rich, that's fine. But what is the what is the end goal besides being rich for you? Because if you're not prepared for wealth or prepared to be rich, Most people go broke because they don't know what to do with that. They start mm -hmm. buying things. They start giving money. They start trying to take care of everyone. And then they start to see their rich start to dwindle. And now they're trying to figure mm -hmm. out what happened. So for me, your rich life will look different from everyone else. And if you think that mm -hmm. being rich is going to become an over a big, um, is an overnight thing, You're lit, you're not in a realistic place uh, because even with your athletes and celebrities, they'll tell you they were not overnight success. They've been putting work in for months and years and sometimes many years before that one thing happened. And that's mm -hmm. the same thing with your financial journey. Mm -hmm. You may you may get to a meal. You may become rich. But at what what let what type of. Um, commitment and sacrifice, because let me tell you something to become rich or wealthy, there's going to be some sacrifices that you're going to have to do. There's going to be some things that you're going to have to pass on when everybody else is doing it. Be you know, be just becoming debt free is hard. So just imagine what becoming rich is like. <laughs> there's a lot of people who want they've been trying to be debt free for years, <laughs> but and they're still not rich. So just imagine what that's going to look like, because a lot of people have this um, false narrative that once I'm debt free, that I'm everything's going to be, you know, apples and unicorns <laughs> and everything, you know, mm -hmm. mountaintops. Is it a a lot less stress? Yes. But it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you're going that's going to be your path and that's going to just supersede you to wealth. And I'm not trying to take anybody no. from that because me and my husband live off of 35% of what we make. Totally. We live on the, we, we save, invest and give 65% of what we make. But did we get here? No, we just got here. Mm. And I teach people across the globe how to do it. But we just started this journey mm. of living on less um, than what we make in just 18 months ago. Mm -hmm. Now, um Uh, another thing that, that, that another myth is that some people believe that in order to become richer, they have to make other people poorer. No. And I think, and I think that's complete BS. Right. I think so too. I think that's complete BS. You don't have to um, make anybody else feel less or pull yourself up to be successful in any area of your life, especially financial. Um, giving is the... I think it's, your, it's, it's the other way around. Right. I think it's by uplifting <laughs> other said, people. I said, this is why you see so many people who are wealthy and rich or who are well off, they give because they understand the reciprocity, you know, they understand reciprocity that it's about giving The more you give, the more you receive. It's not just a cliche um, because the, the more that you put out, that means that you're not in a scarcity mindset. I used to be one of those people. So I'm going to be very transparent because I was homeless. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to see my bank account dwindle. <laughs> no, I start getting scared, start sweating, start panicking. 
But I had to realize holding on to that means that I don't trust my growth and I don't trust Mm -hmm. the abilities that I have to be able to create more by giving more. Yep. And so think about that when you're like in that scarcity mindset, because some first a lot of people who have lost everything, who've hit financial, who've lost hit rock bottom. A scarcity mindset can definitely set in once you kind of get back there because you don't want to go back to where you are. But you have to remember the only way to continue to be able to grow and to see your bank account grow is to be able to give more out. So that way you won't be Mm. so attached to your money that it becomes your master. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's that's a great one. That's a great one. Now, a complete other question. We're coming to the, 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 the more final questions. Okay. What would you tell your the 18-year or the 16-year young Sharita if you would meet her down the street? <laughs> I would tell her that you have everything that you need inside of you to be who you were destined to be and that the hard places that you face are going to be the strength that you're going to need to greatly impact others. And your story is going to be heard and not, don't be ashamed to share it. Wow. 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 Great. Now the other way around, if you now we're going to fast forward Mm -hmm. Who is Sharita in 10 years? In 10 years, at 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time, I will have broken the chain from my family and amassed $100 million net. And I'm going to give it to 10 organizations across the globe. And it's not about the income. It's that, Sharita, you did what you said, and you have created a change and healed your family and my I my dad your my dad is proud of you because I told my dad when he died that his death and his legacy didn't die with him so I did what my dad didn't get to complete it was done by me Wow. And and um, I mean, your 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 children are also seeing you, because children don't do what you say they have mm-hmm. to, they, they are doing, but they do what you do. Right. So I assume they're like mini mo- money mindsets mm-hmm. um, givers in the world right, right now. Right. Right. And I'm. Doing, you know, I was afraid to do things like this in the beginning because I always wondered how can people trust me when they know all the bad stuff they've heard. They saw me homeless with two kids. How can they trust me to be a financial expert and a money mentor? Um, But that's like, that's like the imposter syndrome that you're right. now describing. <laughs> and so I struggled with that for so long because I did not want mm-hmm. to tell people that because I worried, are they going to be able to relate to me? They're going to be like, how can I trust you? <laughs> you didn't make great financial decisions. But I had to come out of my box because that was a part of my journey. And as soon as I did that, it felt relief because mm-hmm. you don't Liber- have- liberating. You don't have to live behind a mask and make people feel yeah. like you have yeah. it all together. No. I don't have it yeah. all together. I'm still figuring this thing out. But what I do know is but, that. But, but it, it, it makes you it makes you human and authentic. Right. And that's is something where people can connect with. Right. I mean, if you're <laughs> like from plastic and, you, right. and you're some kind of coach with some kind of theoretical thing, people don't believe you. It's, right. it's your. <laughs> Mess that, it's your mess that becomes your message or your shit who becomes a shift. Right. Yes. I was just all of that. <laughs> I was just, I just, I needed that. You know, I, I, I would not be here. Like I told people and they're like, how could you say that? Like, man, it's so much strength in that. I was just like, 
I was blessed and transformed when I hit rock bottom because I didn't know what I didn't know. I just knew what, what I was taught or what I what I saw in the neighborhood that I grew up with in my family. This is all they knew. So I knew that was the transformation when they're like, well, what was the pivotal moment? Showing up and the sheriff putting us out <laughs> was very pivotal. But of course I cried about it, but I told myself that I will never be in a position where I will lose the one place that we all need. And that's a covering um, into somewhere to call home. So I think that was the thing that was very transformational for me. So I tell people where you are is not your destiny. If you're not where you want to be, it's not your destiny. It's the process to get to your purpose. So eventually Mm -hmm. you're going to, those things will align, but discipline Mm -hmm. and faith will supersede those things and really get you into a pattern where all things start to fall into place. And it's not always going to be apples and oranges and unicorns. I would say that. (laughs) But I said the best thing is the journey. Sometimes we're trying to get to the riches and we're not celebrating the journey. Celebrate the journey. Isn't it it, it always about the journey and not the destiny? The journey. The (laughs) destiny. That, I mean, I mean, what would, what would, what would, what would be the destiny worthwhile? Right. If you don't have the journey, right. I mean, that's the same. And and, and 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 <laughs> nothing yeah. to reminisce on. <laughs> if you just I, make, don't rush it, because yeah, when you get there, like babies, like I know people are like, no, I want to walk, I want to run, I want to jump in the car. I said, but enjoy the moments when you're crawling, mm. or you have to sit still. Are the ones where sometimes you just have to walk and it's not going to be mm-hmm. as fast as you want it to be. But look mm-hmm. back. If you just look back from last year or yesterday mm-hmm. or last week, what is that one thing that you did that you can say, man, I'm proud of me or I've overcome so much where every day you can see something. It's not always about your finances, because when you build yourself up in the inside, you can literally put out into the world what you want to yeah. do and make it happen because you have the confidence to be able to create the commas in your bank account, to create mm. the lifestyle that you want to live, to be able to help people. Because we all see stories on the internet or on television, and mm-hmm. you're like, man, if I just had the money to help. And mm-hmm. some of you use that as motivation. So you're like, I, in a, I want to be able to help children. I want to be able to help people who are home. Use those things as motivation and not always just see them as sob stories. Maybe you're the answer to that thing that is happening, or at least you can provide some type of resource and make that your thing that's going to drive you because all those things are the things that truly make you rich. Yeah. Sharita, I want to say you're a beautiful soul. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's been it's been really a pleasure having you. Thank you for having me. I mean, uh, it's uh, it's uh, yeah, it's it's been great. It's been really insightful sharing your story. So I wish you all the best. Thank you. Don't hang Thank up you. because because I see we <laughs> don't have we, we don't have a <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course. So uh, so so don't hang up. Okay. And I wish you all the best, Sherita. Okay, great. Thank you. Hey, it's Peter here. Thanks a lot for listening to What's On Your Mind. Looking forward to your opinions and comments. And don't forget to subscribe on psgrow.com and leave your email address to stay tuned for future episodes. Bye.